welcome to the Bookends YouTube channel, the pandemic edition or the social distancing edition. Either way, I'm here in the office on my own. Everybody at Bookends is working at home. Everybody is safe and healthy, which are the most important things. It's interesting times. And during these interesting times, I am putting out a few videos on my own because I wanted to keep putting out content for authors. I feel like we're all a little um, scattered sometimes, looking for things to occupy us. And if I could provide useful information that you could learn from while sort of gazing off at YouTube and distracting yourself from other things, I thought, let's try that. Not only that, I have to admit, you've been really helpful for me. When I am gazing off into the distance, not focusing, it's been a nice change of pace for me to sit here with you and um, give some advice, some guidance, tell, talk a little bit about publishing and my own experiences, and hopefully maybe even entertain you. Every week you'll still see a video from James and I. We have been keeping, the, well, actually we prepped those, um, seeing what was coming and knowing that we were likely going to be working from home. We prepped a number of videos so that we could keep our YouTube alive and active. So those will still be coming. You're still going to see James. And I think there's going to be um, some social distancing videos with the two of us coming soon, which I'm excited about. But I've chatted your ear off now. So let me talk about what I'm here to talk about. And that is agents specializing, most specifically, obviously, in genres. You've probably noticed once you've gotten into your agent search, uh, once you've started looking at who you're going to send your query out to, that agents specialize. And every once in a while, I've been challenged uh, by authors on this, saying things like, well, if you're a good agent, you should be able to represent anything. I don't agree with that, obviously, but let me explain a little how and why agents specialize. And to be honest, a lot of it comes down to what you like to read. I understand certain genres because I read them a lot. And agenting isn't like being a car salesman. It's not just about selling a book. Presumably, um, and I don't mean to diss car salesmen here, car sales people, I should say, can sell anything, any car. They know enough about cars to be given the statistics on a certain car, and they can go out and sell it. I know I've certainly bought cars from car salespeople who didn't know anything about the particular car I was buying, or I may have known a little bit more, that was fine. Their job wasn't necessarily to convince me to buy the car at that point. I knew what I wanted. Selling books is a little different because agents aren't just selling books. We are helping the author bring those books to the next level. We are also appealing to a subjective nature of editors and readers. And for us to understand what makes a good, a good book or a book viable in that particular market, we need to understand that particular market. The science fiction market is different than the mystery market. Those different readers are seeking different things in the books they're reading. There are certain tropes that work in each of those genres. There are certain tropes that are overdone. There are character uh, personality traits that work in certain genres that might not work in another. And as an agent, I have to understand that because when I'm picking up your book to, reading it, to read it and I'm giving you suggestions on how to improve it, some of those suggestions are based on my knowledge of the market. Uh, in Cozy Mysteries, for example, I have been known to say to an author without doing any preliminary research, listen, I know the hook you're seeking, let's say a, um, a, a bookmobile cat has been done. So let's not do a bookmobile cat with your idea. Let's switch it up to a lighthouse cat. That hasn't been done, although it probably has. So let's do that instead. That's based on my knowledge of the market for cozy mysteries. If I didn't know that market, I wouldn't be able to give that kind of advice. And therefore, I would be submitting a little scattered. I would be doing 
random things without fully understanding what the market needed or wanted, which wouldn't allow me to do my best as an agent. So let's look at the genres I represent and have represented over the years because honestly, they've changed. The first genre I took on as an editor and started representing was romance. I'm gonna be honest with you here. When I got my first job in publishing as the assistant to a romance editor, I had never truly read a romance. The editor knew that, she chose to hire me anyway, but I read a lot of commercial fiction. I immediately fell in love with romance. I read a ton of it and I worked on a ton of it and I got to know the market very well. The same was true of mysteries. I read a ton of it, I worked on a ton of it, and I got to know the market very well. The books I now represent tend to be mysteries um, in all genres, suspense, thrillers, straight mysteries, cozy mysteries. I also represent women's fiction, upmarket fiction and literary fiction. And I think of upmarket fiction as also a descriptor to the other genres I represent. In other words, I may represent an upmarket thriller or an upmarket suspense. James and I are going to do a video explaining the different genres, but upmarket are um, those books that sort of fall between literary and commercial. They tend to have a hook that appeals to a commercial audience. Let's use Seven Days of Us because I think it's very timely. Seven Days of Us is about a family, a family including adult children, who are quarantined together around Christmas for seven days. That's a very commercial hook. In other words, I told you all about that book in one sentence, and you immediately had a reaction. Either that sounded interesting or it didn't, based on one sen sentence. That's a commercial hook. The writing, however, of that book is a little bit more upmarket. It's a little bit more literary than a typical commercial book, which would be something like a romance or mystery. Let me clarify something. Upmarket literary does not mean better than commercial. It's a different style of writing. Both are fantastic. Both are difficult for anybody to do. So I wanna make that distinction because sometimes I think there's a feeling that upmarket or literary are better. They are not. They're just slightly different. So that's what upmarket is. So anyway, back to my genres. Mystery, women's fiction, upmarket, and literary are the primary fiction genres I represent. I also represent nonfiction. I chose to represent those genres because those are the books I read. Those are the books I want to read. And when it comes down to the very beginning of me taking on new clients and digging into my query inbox, it comes down to what do I want to read? The query is all about me reading it and saying, I want to read this book. But on top of that, because those are the books I read in my spare time, those are the books I get to know. Every book I read is also a study in the market, the genre, the writing styles, writing techniques, and also a study in my own editing. So I am paying attention to characterization and plotting and pacing and all of those things I might be talking to my authors about in those books as I'm reading. Different genres have different plotting, pacing, and characterization, different techniques, different styles, different patterns, and different expectations from the readers. I don't know enough about science fiction or fantasy because I don't read it. I don't know what common storylines are. So, an author could come to me with a book that sounds absolutely fantastic and brilliant and new and like something I've never heard of. And I could go to Naomi and say, listen to this. And she would say, it sounds exactly like blah, 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 blah. She knows that because Naomi represents science fiction and fantasy and she reads a lot of it in her spare time. So that's why agents choose a genre. And I know it seems really obvious, but I think sometimes to beginning authors or those just starting out in publishing, an agent is seen as simply as a salesperson and a salesperson should be able to sell whatever it is they're given. But an agent's job is so much more than just selling a book. It's also preparing the book for sale. Also, we need to know the editors in the market 
And I think it would be nearly impossible for a single agent to know every editor of every genre and not just who their names are, but what their specialties are and also what their true loves and their passions and all of these other things we know about editors that help us choose who to submit to. So that's genre. Let's talk MSWL for a minute. MSWL is a manuscript wish list. And a lot of agents have a manuscript wish list, which usually means just a book they would love to read on a certain subject in the genres they represent. So for example, um, I would love to do a book, believe it or not, I am not entirely against pandemic books, but I would love to see a book similar to Seven Days of Us, a book about what happens to a family and within a family when they are forced into quarantine together. I know a lot of us are experiencing it now, and I know there are a lot of stories out there. Could be women's fiction. It could be a suspense or a thriller. It could be whatever you envision it, but that idea is something that sounds interesting to me. That if somebody pitched it to me, I'd be like, oh, that would that's a book that sounds interesting to me. There's no real rhyme or reason to an MSWL, an MSWL. It usually just connects to the personal interests. I would love to see more books set in Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota and I consider myself a Minnesotan now and forever. I can't believe I don't have any books set in Minnesota on my list. So I would love something like that. I find wilderness survival books, plane crash survival books, I guess generally survival books, fascinating. And I think that comes down to my interest in the human condition and how we survive things. So those type of survival books always grab my attention. For other people that might not grab their attention at all. Um, agents and editors who are knitters. If you can hear, there's lots of activity in the neighborhood, right? Times, pandemic times, this is what we're in. Um, other people might have passions for knitting and might gravitate towards any book that features knitting. For some, it might be race cars. For others, it might be baseball. Um, for some, it might be a cultural experience. It could be, I don't even know, but things like that. Those are what grab our attention. I also love to cook books that feature chefs and bakers and cooking also really grab my attention because it's a personal interest of mine. And so by sharing an MSWL, what agents are really doing is saying, Hey, this is a personal interest of mine. And the truth is we all love reading about our personal interests. So I hope that gives you a little insight to why agents and editors represent the genres they represent and why an MSWL may be an MSWL. I hope you're going to query bookends when you're ready. I hope you're going to like this video and don't forget to subscribe. I think it's down there somewhere because we have a lot more coming, some by me solo and definitely more with James. So stay well, stay healthy. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you soon.